Hey, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the second episode of Tutorial Tuesday. This tutorial is one that a ton of you have asked me for and today I'm going to show you how to set up a Hackintosh. Now I'm taking this from the software and the machine configuration. I'm not taking it from the build aspect because there's too many variations. So I'm making an assumption you already have the hardware that you want to install it on and that you've done a little bit of research to find out what specific configurations you need for that hardware. If you need help with that, I'll have some links down in the description that take you out to some sites to help you with that. And the reason why I'm taking this route is I've been asked for a tutorial on every single Hackintosh that I've built. There's no way I can do tutorials on each individual one. So this one is a general build. There's going to be specifics for your machine that are not covered in this build as this is just a general guide, but this is enough to get your machine up and running so that you can work on those tweaks with the links I give you down below. In addition, there is a ton of different ways to build a Hackintosh. This is just one of those ways in the way that I found to be the easiest, so I wanted to share it with you. And really the only hardware you're gonna need besides the machine that you're gonna be building this on is the hard drive you're gonna be installing it to and a way to hook that hard drive up to a real Mac by USB. If you don't have an adapter like that, I have a link down in the description to an affordable one on Amazon. That's the one I'm gonna be using in this tutorial. And with all that out of the way, let's jump right into it. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is take that hard drive, hook it up to that USB adapter and plug it into our Mac. Then we're gonna start up the Mac holding down the Option and R keys. All right, so we restarted the computer with Option R. We have our external drive hooked up and we are booting into recovery to format that drive and install Mac OS on it. Okay, so here we are at the startup menu and we have the external drive hooked up by USB. So what we wanna do is we wanna go into Disk Utility and make sure we wipe out that drive and get it ready for Mac OS. Now I had installed Linux on this, so I'm gonna go and show all devices so that I can choose the root of this drive and erase it. And because this is an SSD, I'm gonna set it for the APFS and make sure it's a GUID partition map. And I am gonna set this as Frankintosh. And if you saw my last video, you know why. Okay, so this is all set up. We're gonna exit out here and we're gonna go to reinstall Mac OS, hit continue. Continue again. We're gonna to agree to this and then the next screen, it'll let us choose which one we wanna install it on. Now we don't wanna install it on the internal drive because that'll just wipe out the Mac OS that we have already installed. We wanna make sure we select our external drive that'll show up in yellow like this because it's a USB drive and we're gonna install it on there. Now this is gonna take quite a while so we're just gonna wait for this to finish and when it finishes, I'll come back. All right, so at one point during the installation, your machine is gonna restart and the screen's gonna go black for a second and then come back to this screen. Don't worry, this is natural. This is part of the installation. Just let this piece continue. All right, so when it's all done, it boots up to the setup screen, but we don't actually wanna set up this drive because this is trying to set up the new drive we did. So I'm gonna power it off and then restart it holding down the option key and that'll give us the option on which one to start up and we'll choose the old internal drive. So let's do that now. All right, so now I'm restarting again, but this time holding down the option key and we should get an option of which drive to boot into. So it's gonna try to choose that uh, new drive we just did by default. We wanna go ahead and choose that internal drive because now we're gonna boot into Mac OS and do the rest of the setup on that drive we just created. So in my case, that Frankintosh drive, we're gonna go ahead and do the rest of the setup on there. And once we're done with that, we'll be able to boot into our new machine. All right, so before we get started, there's a few pieces of software that you're gonna need. First of all, if you found somebody that's built the machine similar to yours and you're able to find some of the work that they've done already and you get a pre-configured config.p list, this is just a set of settings that correspond to your computer. Uh, you're gonna wanna use that, that's the easiest way. If you don't have that, don't worry about it. You can add the stuff in manually and I'll have links in the description to show you how to do that. You're also going to need Clover Configurator. This is what's going to allow you to edit that EFI file. You'll need the Clover Installer. The Clover is a bootloader 
So this is what is gonna allow you to boot into Mac OS from your Hackintosh. So the other thing in here is these KEXTs. KEXTs are basically drivers. These are what's gonna tell Mac OS how to talk to some of the hardware on your computer. A lot of these are generic that you're gonna need for basically any Hackintosh. Some of the ones that you may not necessarily need are this Voodoo HDA and the Ethernet driver. The Ethernet driver is gonna depend on what Ethernet card you have on your computer, and that's where some of that research that you're gonna do beforehand comes in. The rest of these are all pretty standard that you'll need for all of the Hackintoshes that you build. I'll have a link down in the description to all these KEXTs. I'll also have a link that tells you how to identify the ones that you need for whatever hardware you're using. So now that we have all these downloaded, we are ready to move on to the next step and actually start setting this up. All right, so we got Mac OS installed on the hard drive, rebooted and plugged it back in. So we can see the hard drive right here that we formatted in the last step. And I have all my utilities in this KEXT folder. The first thing we wanna do is install the Clover bootloader. And we want to make sure that we install this on the hard drive that we wanna use for our Hackintosh and not our default Mac hard drive. So let's go through here. So we're gonna change the install location to that drive that we formatted in the previous steps. And then we wanna come into this customize. We need to make some changes in here. First thing is we wanna make sure that we're using Clover for UEFI boot only. So we'll click that. This will be installed by Default, we definitely need that. We can come down to the themes, choose a theme we want. Uh, I'm just gonna do the Clovey theme. And then down to drivers, it should have installed these automatically, but we definitely wanna make sure that we have the ASPF, APFS driver loader and Aptio memory fix. We are gonna install the RC scripts on the target volume, optional scripts. We're just gonna go ahead and do all of these. And we want to install the preference pane. That should be about it. We're gonna go ahead and install. All right, so we have the Clover EFI completed. We can close that. The next step is that we want to go into this EF EFI and into Clover. And if you have a config.plist, you'll want to use that at this time. So for this build, if you're using this machine, I'll have a link down in the description, but you can come in and I'm just going to rename this to .old and I'm going to copy this config.plist over. All right, now the next thing we wanna do is open up Clover Configurator, which I forgot to copy over here, so I'll just do that. If it asks for any updates, make sure you install those because you definitely wanna use the latest version. Depending on what machine you're building on, the config.plist is gonna be different, so you're gonna to have to identify what works for your build. This config.plist works for this machine, but it may not work on your machine and it may not even work on your machine with the same setup. So just beware, you're gonna to have to do some research on what the config dot, or what options you're gonna set in here. All right, now that you're done with your config.plist, the next thing we wanna do is copy all these KEXTs into the appropriate folder in the EFI volume. So we're gonna to go to EFI, EFI again, Clover, KEXTs, and then other. And we're just gonna take all these KEXTs and we're gonna dump them in here. Now it's just a matter of putting this hard drive into our Hackintosh, restarting and going through the setup. All right, so before we boot into the system, we need to go into the BIOS for the machine that we're gonna turn into the Hackintosh and set a few key settings. Now, what I show you in this video is probably gonna be in a different area on your machine, but just find out where they are in your BIOS and set them like I show you in here and you should be good to go. First thing we wanna do is go to storage and make sure that the SATA emulation is set to AHCI. If you have it set to IDE, you're not gonna be able to boot up your Hackintosh. You gotta make sure that's set for AHCI. Next thing we wanna do is make sure secure boot is disabled across the board. We don't want that enabled, that's gonna cause some problems. And then we want to find out where 
virtualization technology directed, the VTD is located and make sure that is disabled. So a couple of other settings, look for where your serial port is. It's probably gonna be set to a port assignment. Make sure that's set to disabled. I've seen that cause issues. And if you're doing a configuration like I am with the integrated GPU as well as a dedicated GPU, this is gonna seem kind of weird, but you wanna set the Intel VGA controller as primary. You would be tempted to set the NVIDIA or the ATI card as primary because that's the faster card. If you do, there's gonna be problems with Final Cut Pro. I couldn't even get it to start without making this setting. But don't worry, when you play games and do graphically intensive stuff, it still uses the dedicated GPU and not the internal GPU. So on my machine, those are the only changes I have to make. There's a list of recommended changes that you can make to your BIOS if it supports it. Some of those changes are not available in my BIOS, but I'll put a link down in the description if you wanna check that out and see if you have them available in yours. Make sure you save your changes and exit, and then you can shut down the machine, put that hard drive in that we created in the previous step, and boot into the setup for your new Hackintosh. All right, so as you can see, it started up and we are at the normal Mac OS setup. You can just step through here the way you would on a regular Mac and you'll be taken to your desktop of your new Hackintosh. We did all the setup on the other machine, so once we're in there, there's nothing else we have to set up and we can just start using it. So that's all there is to it. It's really not all that difficult. As long as you do some research to find out what you need for your machine, chances are somebody's probably already built one with your machine, so you can just piggyback off of their work. Now, using the external Mac to build the drive is just one way to do this, and it's the way that I found to be the most reliable, the easiest, and the one that I've had the most success with. So this is the way that I recommend if you have access to a Mac. Now, hopefully you found this useful and informative. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you really liked it and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Come see me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I love meeting new people over there and chatting with them about Hackintoshes or whatever else. And I hope to see you in the next video.